Five down, one to go. First place, baby. It's ours once again as we knocked off the 2015 NFC North champs. The 2016 season comes down to one final game of epic proportions as the green and gold travel to Motown for a different kind of miracle this time around. And we break it all down next on your Packers Fan Podcast. Hey, Packers fans, this is your unofficial Packers fan podcast, and these are the podcasters you're looking for. One of these guys, even though he's a huge fan of the Packers, he doesn't like bratwursts and wonders if that's wrong. And the other guy bangs the drum all day and thinks, touchdown. And now it's time to go, Pack, go with your hosts, Wayne Henderson and Troy Heinrichs. Thanks for joining us. This is the show by and for fans of your 13-time NFL champion, Green Bay Packers. We want to hear your voice. Keep this number handy because the playoffs are coming our way. It's almost here. It's going to happen. Call us at 920-3-PACK-GO. That's 920-3-PACK-GO. Or anywhere in the world, go to PackersFanPodcast.com slash feedback and leave your feedback for us that way. This is Episode 125 of your Packers Fan Podcast, recorded December 27th, 2016. The new year is almost here, and we'll have the show notes for this episode at PackersFanPodcast.com slash 125. On this episode, we'll be breaking down that epic win over those Minnesota Vikings. We'll look at all the playoff scenarios, even though we all know 10. 10 wins is the message. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. But we'll just make sure we have all of the backup plans in case because we're fans and we stress out and we'll take a look at the injury report as well as get all the comments by you, the fans from that Epic win Sunday. And we're going to have the Packers dope sheet highlights for the Packers at lions game this Sunday night. Troy's going to have his keys to the Packers beating those pesky lions. We'll have our wild guesses of the final score for the Packers matchup. And me, I'm at Wayne Henderson, your voice acting podcasting part owner of the NFC North leading green Bay Packers. Man, that sounds so good. I'm at Troy Heinrichs. Is your table running? Well, then you better catch it. (laughs) (laughs) You know, that one always works. Oh, the Packers Fan Podcast is available on demand and on the go with our free Packers Fan Podcast app for iOS and Android presented by theticketking.com. Remember, you're not sold out until the king is sold out. Get Packers tickets at the best prices by visiting packersfanpodcast.com slash tickets for all the juicy details and another great victory, Troy, with lots of highlights. Where do you want to start this week? If there was any way to end the home season, the home regular season, I should say, at Lambeau Field, man, was this the way to do it? Four touchdowns and one to run in. The guy was on fire. On fire. He really was. I could not believe how well Aaron Rodgers was moving. He was not bluffing when he said that his injuries were feeling a lot better because he looked like the good old AR-12 we're used to. And he was just poised. Again, it goes back to the offensive line. The offensive line this week was just fantastic as far as getting him all the time he needed in the world. And then, of course, making sure not to get any holding calls when Aaron goes out on those scramble routes. Classic Aaron and Jordy combinations. And with the two touchdowns in this game, we now have the most prolific quarterback receiver duo in all of Packers history surpassing one Brett Favre and Antonio Freeman. So way to go AR 12 and number 87. I loved it when they were like, Jordy, Jordy, yes. Jordy. It was amazing to hear that come across on the TV. And I had some uh, friends and family members there at Lambeau field. It was just, just an epic game, epic game all around. Yeah. It looked beautiful. The Vikings didn't look so beautiful. And even Clay Matthews, we haven't seen all that many highlights from our friend Clay this year, but this game, man, he was he was laying it out. He's letting people know he's back, and I'm saying just in time. What do you think? Great defense? He, oh, absolutely. He made his presence felt. I mean, one, to be able to go in there and get a sack because he wasn't able to push around anybody last week. So this is a great way to see that he may not actually need the surgery that we were thinking last week. So getting in there, getting that sack for a loss, Plus those two passes defended. I mean, those could have become turnovers really, really easily the way he batted the ball up there. So close. So really, really great to see Clay back in the game. And you know what's awesome is that with Clay stepping it up now over these last two weeks, we've held the opposing team to under 100 yards rushing. So that Magnificent Seven may just be peaking again at the right time. Now is the time. And let me give a special shout out for one of my highlights for the game. 
to the crowd at Lambeau Field. They were full. <laughs> they were loud. They were beautiful. And and a lot of them got a special bonus from Mr. Aaron Rodgers when he did a Lambeau leap. So the, the Lambeau crowd showing how magical that place really is. How fantastic was that running play? I mean, the whole time you're sitting there going like, oh, my God, please don't get hurt. Please don't get yes. hurt. Please don't get hurt. <laughs> And then he jukes that guy completely out of his shorts, left his underwear on the field. He juked him out so bad to get that touchdown. What a fantastic run. And that's to me, that run right there signifies a stamp of approval for MVP for Aaron Rodgers for this season to be able to come back after those four losses in a row and literally one game away from running the table as he predicted. I mean, how do you not give him the MVP? No idea. And how do you not give Jordy Nelson the Comeback Player of the Year award? Oh, no doubt. I mean, he's over 1,000 yards on the season now. I mean, Devontae Adams, you know, no slouch either because he is 40 yards away from going over the 1,000 mark. So I, I think that that's something that we need to do is figure out a way that we get Jordy another touchdown and we get at least 40 yards for Devontae Adams in this game against the Lions. No worries at all. And a few more chances for us to yell out, Celebratory Geronimo. I tell you, Geronimo has stepped up big time in the absence of Randall Cobb. This guy, I mean, there was a pass he caught. I think it was in the third or fourth quarter that just rifled at him. Like any other receiver would have dropped that ball. The fact that he was able to hang on to that clearly shows the skills that he was impressing the coaches with back in the uh, preseason drills. I don't know if you remember that. We talked about that back in the preseason on the, on the turn and catch drill and that Geronimo was the only one to cut, catch five out of five. So really, really exciting to see that that stuff is happening now and coming to fruition for Geronimo. And then, you know, sky's the limit for next season. It's going to be great to see where this all shakes out. Oh, absolutely. And how about another highlight? How about another shout out? Kristen Michael. Oh, yeah. I mean, who knew that? You know, I think there were people that were talking about you know, Tyron Montgomery being the uh, resurging runner that he is and kind of taking that as a full-time job now. Should he be returning you know, kickoffs and things of that nature. And we said, if you ain't broke, don't fix it. But Christine Michael did a heck of a job in the return game, uh, equaling Ty Montgomery's uh, average yards on the returns. So I think that that's a thing that we could do is have uh, Michael be our uh, return person so that Ty doesn't have to worry about that injury factor, especially going into the playoffs. I am so thankful that he's finally getting put into the mix a little more every week. And it's just in time because going on the road for the final game of the year it's going to be all hands on deck. And the only real low light that really jumps out at me is just the fact that whether it's game plan or how the defense played, we're allowing way too many garbage time touchdowns because some people told me they saw the score. Wow, that game was fairly close. I said, no, that game was not close at all. Just in the fourth quarter, all of a sudden, you know, the Vikings got touchdowns, but there was no way they were going to win. Why are we allowing garbage time touchdowns? I think it's just because you get back there and you play that prevent defense and it just it just opens up the field so you can move the ball fairly well. So that's something that we have to keep in mind is that especially when we talk about the comeback kids there in Detroit playing in their field uh, this Sunday night, it's going to be really tempting to kind of sit back on our laurels. So I think we're going to have to do exactly what we did the first time we played these guys at Lambeau Field, which is run that score up pretty darn early because we need to have at least a two to three touchdown cushion when it comes to the comeback kids, because you know that they will be a nail biter at the end if Stafford actually plays anywhere near his full potential. Yeah, we don't want it to come down to the final one second of the game like it did last year. <laughs> you know. What, what's really interesting, though, is that the Packers are getting this job done over this stretch. They're actually putting up less total yards against their opponents, and they're putting up actually less time of possession. So the efficiency that the Packers are scoring points at right now I mean, it's truly the offensive old, so it's it's just great to see that out there. But it'd be nice for him to see some more methodical time of possession drives just to keep the defense a little bit more rested. I think that would also help, too, in those garbage time touchdown situations because in this game, especially 31 minutes, the defense was on the field versus our 29. So we need to make sure that we do give the defense a little bit more of a breather and a rest and really get that running game going. That's a good point. Were there any other lowlights that you witnessed? Uh, nothing real spectacular. The third quarter, I don't know what was going on there. If it was just pure adjustments or something that happened because uh, neither team actually scored in the third quarter. And I was getting a, a little nervous that you put up 28 and then you kind of put the brakes on again. 
and we did get outscored uh, 12 to 10 in the fourth. So we just got to make sure we keep our, you know, pedal to the metal all four quarters again, something that we seem to kind of let up on in that third quarter. I mean, granted, it is the time when most people take a nap, so they don't want to put anything exciting up there <laughs> because then you'll miss it. But it'd be nice to have an, at least a, a buffer touchdown in that third quarter. I think I'd rather wake up from a nap and realize, oh, my goodness, the Packers scored another four touchdowns while I had a brief 20 minute nap. <laughs> Although be fun. I rarely nap during Packers games. Oh, and especially this one. This one was fantastic. That was. I had the TV very, very loud, even though the kids and grandkids were visiting. You know, the grandkids are in the other room trying to watch Paw Patrol and all this. Why is the TV so loud? It's like, look, it's the Packers. In just a few hours, we'll turn it back down. <laughs> I think the other great thing from this game is the red zone efficiency, right? Uh, three out of four in the red zone, plus the penalties. We're playing much better fundamentals around the football only three penalties for 21 yards in this game. So really, really taking care of the ball. And again, no turnovers, which I don't think he's thrown an interception in this entire table run. Well, let's keep that streak alive, please. No doubt. I still can't believe first place. <laughs> it's it's amazing to think where we were five weeks ago. We were all like, everybody should get fired. And it's <laughs> also amazing to think that about that same time, everybody's anointing the Lions and the Vikings as the only possible winners of the NFC North. And uh, who knows, depending on how things shake out Sunday night, the Lions may or may not even be in the playoffs. And what's great is that you look at the points for, points against. Now, Green Bay still has given up quite a few points this year, 364. But the points for, to be back over the 400 mark again, that's pretty impressive to say, you know, of all things, where we were during that four-game losing streak to be back over 400 points for that means the offense is really gelling again. Yes. In fact, the offense is gelling so well on Monday's weekly Twitter poll question. I posted out the Packers offense is looking brilliant lately. How well do you think we will do in Detroit against the lions? And 4%, fortunately only 4% voted that the season is going to end badly in Detroit. 2% think the Packers are going to win, but it's going to take overtime to do it. That'll be heart attack time for everybody involved. And on the other hand, as far as the Green Bay Packers uh, doing well in Detroit against the Lions, 60% say we will win, but it's going to be close. And 34% of the people that voted at Packers Fan Pod said we will win big again. I mean, we did have their number. You know, that first game earlier in the season ran up the score. What was it, 30 points or so by halftime? 31, I think it was. So we have to make sure that we can do that same kind of pace, that same kind of scheme. Granted, these are two teams, battle wounds, everything. But the Packers right now, if you say that they are going to lose this game, I would almost call you crazy because the momentum is in their favor. And man, if they lose on Sunday and Washington wins and we miss the playoffs, how devastating of a season is that for these guys who've literally poured blood, sweat and tears out on the field these last five weeks? Very devastating indeed. In addition to answering the poll questions, we've got two quick comments about the poll question. Undebated on Twitter said, win a close one. Stafford is going to explode on our secondary and Rodgers needs to make up for that. I don't see it. I mean, it, it's possible. The secondary still is a little bit of a gap for us. And I think that if there was a time for the secondary to truly make a name for themselves, if there was a game where Ha Ha Clinton Dix is going to pick two and solidify to be the interception leader of this season for the entire NFL, this is the game where that's going to happen. And the secondary just has to be that much more amped up for this game than I think any other game that they've played to date. And then it only gets better from here. If you can amp it up and win out and hold them to say less than 20 points, it'll just be a fantastic way to go into the playoffs. But Man, when you look at what we have up uh, up ahead of us, if we do win, you're talking about potentially either playing the Lions again, or you might have to go to Giants, you know, for this first one. And then depending on how ATL shakes out, you could be back playing that high-powered offense against the Falcons. So the secondary really needs to come up and make a statement to say, "Hey, we are here, and we are going to take every ball out of the air from you. So don't even try to pass against us." That's great advice. And watch the film of the Cowboys game from last night because uh, they were able to do some things to Matthew Stafford that I don't think he was very happy about. Oh, my gosh. Look, he was a pancake all 
in that second half, just on the field, constantly on the ground. And so I'd love to see that mix up. And he has a day and a half less than the Packers to get ready for Sunday night's game. Uh, Ryan Hunter at Chosen Radar on Twitter also replied to the poll question saying, just win, baby. Man, winning is the key this week. We need to win so badly. Yeah, win big, so badly. win close, win in overtime, just win, baby. And I know that this is a game that we should win because when you have Caldwell, he's like talking about, are you thinking about a scenario where you just play for the tie? Because if you tie, yeah, you might give the Green Bay the NFC North and the, in the uh, home game in the playoffs, but at least then they would make the playoffs and they'd have a chance to actually win it outright in the playoffs where it really does actually matter. And so the fact that they're talking about a tie situation and trying to play for a tie, I think that's kind of funny. That's something that you'd probably hear on That's Not Football. It, we may very well hear it on That's Not Football, Hank Davis's podcast. Oh, man, I am. I'm super excited already for Sunday night and we got to wait till Sunday night. That's right. We, you know, Packers fans predicted this long time ago that this was going to be an NFC North showdown and it was going to be flexed to the Sunday night game. And sure enough, prime time, Ford Field, 7.30 p.m. Pray to God there's no Hail Mary considerations this year. But <laughs> at the same time, wouldn't it be great just to go out on a Hail Mary and just put it away? It's going to be a long day of football watching and keeping track of how the playoff final slots and uh, the seating all falls into place. So let's take a look at those playoff seatings. So right now, as it stands, as we all know, Packers control their own destiny, win, and they get the NFC North championship, and they are most likely the number four seed, uh, depending on how Seattle uh, works its way through their magic and how Atlanta works its way. So there's still some seeding that can come out. I think at the end of the day, the highest the Packers will be able to go is the third seed because no matter what, if the Falcons lose and say Seattle loses, we'll finish a 10 and six tie with Atlanta. And of course that loss to the Falcons gives them the tiebreaker to get the second seed. And we would be third since we have the tiebreaker over Seattle. So the big thing there of course is winning your in. Now what happens if the worst situation happens and the Packers do lose against the lions? Well then the lions obviously win the North, we get the wild card, but only if the Washington Redskins lose their game on Sunday. So if you ever wanted to cheer for another team, you're cheering for <laughs> the Washington opponent this week in any way, shape, or form you can, because that is a game that everything all Packers fans are going to be watching uh, for their afternoon contests. Yeah, because I think it's Giants at Redskins, and the Giants are kind of on a roll lately, so... I mean, I know it's in Washington, but with the Giants, they very well could win this game. But Eli needs to play a lot better than he did last week. Well, and the thing here is that the Giants can't really improve their position at all because of the fact that Dallas has already cinched up everything from their side. Oh, yeah. So the best the Giants can do is the fifth seed. So they could end up resting some of their people because they can't improve their situation, which would be, you know, sucks for us. But at the same time, you don't want to have to maybe play against Washington in the playoffs if you're the Giants. I mean, look at the Bears when that happened a couple seasons ago where they could have had a chance to knock us out and then we beat them and then beat them in the NFC Championship game. So it, I think that's something that you have to really keep in mind that I don't want to play my division opponent. So I hope the New York Giants are going to come out swinging at 325 on Fox Central Time in order to put away Washington once and for all. So hopefully that game doesn't have very many penalties and it goes along quickly. So it's totally finished before we kick off just so we'll know. Yeah, that would be a real great, just, just a, you know, kind of thing <laughs> <laughs> at seven 30 at night. You don't need all that amp, especially if you're talking about coming off of your, your new year's Eve partying that you do the night before. I mean, you got to get a good nap in, in the afternoon. So make sure you sleep all the way till three o'clock because you need your energy from three twenty five until ten thirty. I think I'm going to bed around 9.30 or 10 o'clock on New Year's Eve. I want to be totally awake for all the action on Sunday. Yeah, no doubt. No doubt. It's going to be a fun, fun time. The AFC's still got some more cut up for them, too. They got a lot of playoff seating switcheroos that could happen out over there. And, man, what a heartbreaker for the Raiders. I mean, could you imagine just Derek Carr going down mm. on the brink of something It's just so epic? <laughs> it's like that franchise just cannot catch a break. Oh, sorry. Pun intended. My bad. Oh, snap. Pun intended. No, just kidding. Um, 
Yeah, between Derek Carr breaking his leg and Marcus Mariota being out for the Titans, you know, that shakes up everything. We, I'm counting on somebody knocking out the Patriots early in the AFC playoffs, so it might come down to the Chiefs and the Steelers. Somebody stop the Patriots, please. And, of course, the magical Houston Texans could still manage to play a home Super Bowl, so that's still out there. We'll have to keep an eye on the Texans to see what they do for their playoff run. Whether Savage yeah. is at quarterback or they decide to go back with uh, Osweiler, who knows. But uh, speaking of snaps and breaks, the Packers have a little bit of injury things happening as well. What's the latest, Troy? Uh, right now, it looks like we still have uh, James Starks uh, questionable for the game this week. Jaron Elliott at the linebacker position is questionable as well. Randall Cobb still not sure if he's going to be able to go. And then Ladarius Gunter will not return uh, you know, he did not return to the game on uh, Saturday uh, against the Vikings, so it'll be interesting to see if he's able to practice this week. I haven't seen any practice participation reports yet, so obviously those will hopefully start here Wednesday or Thursday. So keep those uh, handy. Just make sure you keep an eye on those to see who's a FP for a full participant versus an LP or an NP limited or non-participant. So just you know, big ones there. Again, Gunter, Cobb, Elliott, and Starks. Want to just make sure everything looks good there. I'm keeping my eyes peeled because Gunter was just starting to get into a bit of a groove and then the elbow. Yeah. The elbows are tough, man, especially when you're out there on that cornerback position, because when you stretch your hands out to do those, you know, knock the pass away or even try to just deflect in the, in the face of the receiver I mean, that elbow is really important. So if that doesn't feel a hundred percent, that's a tough position to play with a bad elbow. Hoping for the best. Come on, get well soon guys going to be a party on new year's day i sure hope so who who would have thought nfl versus college football on new year's day this is this is an interesting treat that happens every once in a while so we'll see how it all shakes out now 2017 is right around the corner and it's going to be even better one because we're going to get our 10th win win the north and go to the playoffs but we want to make sure the packers fan podcast is even better as we go into the postseason and into next season as well. You can help by becoming a Packers Fan Podcast Patreon supporter. It helps us grow the show and bring you more great content each and every week. we got great rewards that you guys can pick up on too. So check out all the different levels. You'll recognize a lot of the numbers out there. That's right. Each dollar value is a member of the Packers organization. So whichever Packers was your favorite, make sure you go ahead and contribute at that level. And then you can do that all by visiting PackersFanPodcast.com slash support. And if you sponsor at the Reggie White level, that's right, 92 bucks a month, you can go to a game with me next season. Again, PackersFanPodcast.com slash support for all the details. And with your support, we can do some cool stuff next season. We hope that you can help us out just like Saberade and Don Lejeune did this season. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter for the Packers Fan Podcast. And with that, let's go ahead and get into the listener feedback and share the thoughts that you guys have. We're going to fire off a voicemail from you, all we from Southeast Texas. Hey, guys, it's Granny Cheese from down here in Southeast Texas. I missed the game today, but it was a great game. And how do I know, you ask? Because we won and we're headed to the playoffs. Go, Pack, go. Have a merry, merry Christmas and a happy new year. And I want to give a shout out to my Texas Packer family, the Texas only Green Bay Packer fanatic down here in Texas. We all say, go Pack, go. Bye, guys. Granny Cheese. Granny Cheese. Sounds like a restaurant chain. Yeah, it could be good stuff. Well, she's already like, she's like, playoffs. She's so excited. She's like, playoffs. It's, whoa, one more game. Still got to win one more game. But yeah, I love the I love the positivity. That's the key. The positivity in the new year. Yes, and since Sunday has of course seen the game and a good shout out for the Texas Only Packers Fanatics group on Facebook as well. Uh good good stuff. Thank you so much for calling us Don, aka Granny Cheese. Also got a comment on Facebook from Colum Nolan in Ireland regarding the Packers big win over the Vikes. He says Aaron Rodgers certainly is ensuring that it is a happy Christmas for Packers fans. Hashtag go pack go. And in regards to our game coming up in Detroit being flexed to Sunday night here in the U S anyway, column says no sleep Mondays are fine. Once they are victory Mondays because uh, Colum's not going to get much sleep in Ireland staying up for the Packers game. Troy. The ability to 
extend your adrenaline in order to make it through Victory Monday. So hopefully it's not a depressing loss on Monday early morning for you, Column, because we're going to be cheering as loud as we can so that all the way across Lake Michigan from my house, hear me all the way from Chicago. I'm going to be hearing Troy coming through on my television signal. I love it. And regarding our Packers moving into first place in the NFC North, Riley asked, says that is awesome, which it very much is. And after the big win over the Vikings, Larry Jarvie commented on Facebook, I said it before, I'll say it again. That is why Aaron Rodgers is the greatest quarterback ever. Go Pack Go! Big words, big words. We got to back it up this week. If he can pull it off this week, then I will agree with Larry that Aaron Rodgers is the best quarterback ever. He's got to finish what he started. That means he's got to put it in. He's got to play 100%, 110% this week and really make everybody eat those words. Just like he said, R-E-L-A-X. He's got to do the same thing with run the table. He's got to make sure that happens at the end of this game on Sunday. Yeah, because if everything goes according to plan and Aaron Rodgers hoists the Lombardi Trophy, he's going to really be into the whole R-E-L-A-X thing. And I <laughs> love it. Everybody breathe, settle in, prepare. Because Serenity a, now. This is the first time I think we've said NFC North notes like this since uh, week two of this season. <laughs> it has been a while. The Packers first place in the NFC North. We are nine and six. Thanks to touchdowns galore. The Lions right behind us at nine and six. Wah, wah, wah. And the Vikings seven and eight out of the playoff hunt. Stinks to be them and the bears. So sad. Uh, not really. And the bears are three and 12. Blech. <laughs> the bears. Oh my gosh. What a season. It'll sure be interesting to see how this all shakes out when we, the NFC Norris division battles it out again in 2017, but big game, big game coming up. It is the final week of the 2016 regular season. It's going to be a oh wait that's outside because this game will be nice and 72 inside Ford field. And yes, this was the play of the year last year for the NFL, the Hail Mary game. Everybody remembers it. So we need to make sure that that is something we only hold and see last year because we're going to win this game outright this year, people. And the big thing again, of course, is these are the comeback kids. So key to the game number one against the Lions is to make sure that we do jump out to that early lead, get up by two, three scores and make sure we have a nice, comfortable padding going into that fourth quarter. The second key of the game is make sure that when it, under two minutes left in the game, that Aaron Rodgers has the football. I do not want to see a Detroit person having the football with less than two minutes to go in this game. I don't care if you got to strip it away. I don't care if you got to take somebody out to get the ball back if they got the ball, but nobody but a green and gold uniform is going to have, or in this case, a white and gold uniform is going to have that ball after two minutes and left in the fourth quarter of this week. So we must be the last possessor of that football. Number three, it's really interesting to see how the Lions rushing game is going to step up. Now we have kept teams under 100 yards rushing the last two games, so we have to see what's going to happen with this death chart. Theo Riddick's still injured. Don't know if he's going to play or not. You still have uh, Dwayne Washington, but Zach Zenner, uh, he was running the ball with ferocity against the Dallas Cowboys in the first half on Monday night. So Keep an eye on Zach Zenner. He might become someone that is going to be a little bit of a nuisance for that front seven. And so if we can contain that rush, that would be the most fantastic thing ever. And I think this one is going to be all about clock management. Clock management is going to be key. So we need to make sure that we're rotating in Michael Montgomery, uh, you know, anybody we can, Rokowski, just to make sure we get that running game moving. Because if we can get that running game moving, man, those long passes to Jordy Nelson and that 40 yards we need to get for Devontae to have a 1,000-yard game. And we're going to open up that passing game just like we opened up butter for our toast on a victory Monday morning. Just spread it out there nice and easily because our running game is going to be the focal point of this matchup against the, the Lions. So it's going to be fantastic. There's going to be mayhem. There's going to be fighting. There's going to be dirty stepping on people. You know, we're going to have the Sioux days coming back without Sioux even being there. This is going to be one bloody NFC North battle, and it's going to be on Sunday night. Kickoff 725 on NBC. Prime time, baby. It's going to be fantastic. Can't wait. I am totally ready. It's it's going to be so awesome. It's also going to be strange having the Packers wrap up the day instead of starting the day, but I'll be sure to have my butter and toast totally ready for you, Troy. 
Good stuff. And Devontae will get that 1,000-yard season. I sure hope so. He deserves it this year. Man, he's been fantastic. He really has, especially after the rough year he had last year. He bounced back big time. And as far as the official Green Bay Packers dope sheet, some of the highlights of that, of course, the title, the NFC North leading 9-6 and six Green Bay Packers travel to Detroit to play the 9-6 and six Lions. Like you said, Troy, Sunday, New Year's Day, 2017, Ford Field, 7.30 p.m. Central Time. And Green Bay will be playing for the NFC North title in Week 17 for the fourth consecutive season. Heart attack medication. <laughs> It all comes down to this last game all the time now. The Packers are currently 2-1 and one in those previous three games. The good thing is, is that because it's 2017, my new benefits year kicks in, so I do have my heart attack meds ready to be picked up Sunday morning at the local Walgreens. Got your copay standing by? Always. Okay. I love it, Troy. Uh, for the second consecutive season, the Packers' final regular season game has been flexed to 7.30 p.m. Central Time marking the sixth primetime Green Bay Packers game this year. The Packers are 3-2 and two in the primetime games this year, so let's go ahead and make it 4-2. and two. That would be very nice indeed. The Packers are finishing the regular season in Detroit for the first time since way back in the day in 1993, and the Packers have won each of the last four matchups between the two teams in the final game of the regular season. That was 2014, 2011, 2008, in 2007. So can I get a go pack go? Go pack go indeed. And the one notable connection, of course, is Lions coach Jim Caldwell. He was inducted into the Beloit, Wisconsin Memorial High School Hall of Fame back in 2011. He was also inducted into the Wisconsin Football Coaches Hall of Fame in 2013. So little did you know that about Jim Caldwell, coach of the Lions. Maybe he'll have a little soft spot for Wisconsin this week. Read the full Packers dope sheet for the Packers-Lions game at PackersFanPodcast.com slash 125. Mm. Predictions time. Got to get this one right. <laughs> well, wait, we can try that for a change. Uh, let's see. Well, you had 28, which was 38. I had 33, which is 30. You, you win. You're closest. I win. <laughs> I'm closest. <laughs> we both went over, but we're or actually neither of us went over, but we were closest. You you win. You go first, Troy. How are the Packers going to fare in Motown? Well, I just love that I said last week that 15 for the Vikings was going to be five field goals, and that they start out the game with two of them, and I was like, that's one, that's two. I know. <laughs> I, you. I was ready because if it came down to that, you'd be going first for all of next season. I I don't know. I really don't know. I feel like if I put a number down here, like the opposite is going to happen. Mm. Well, then in that case, you could put down that it's like a 20 to 20 tie. And if the opposite <laughs> happens, it's still a 20 to 20 tie. This is very true. This is very true. Gosh. Would be whack a doodle. Two scores is 14 points, right? Most times. 16 points. 16 points. I'm going to go Packers 38, Lions 18. Oh, yeah. High scoring puppy there. Packers 38, Lions 18. Troy, I love your score even better than my prediction. I predict the Lions will somehow make it to 20 points, mostly because they are home. But the Packers, check this out. They're going to be victorious and win 32 to 20. Go Pack Go. Go oh, Pack Go indeed. Playoffs. I can smell them from here. Oh, I'm so stressed out already. <laughs> I can't handle it. Oh, we can't lose. We cannot lose. We cannot lose. We cannot lose. We cannot lose. We will not lose. We will not lose. The force is in you. and The force is with me and I am one with the force. There you go. Oh, man. Can't it has wait. been one exciting season, that's for sure. Ups and downs. I mean, the highest of highs, the lowest of lows, and it all comes down to this, and it, thankful that it got moved and flexed to primetime so that everybody can see this game. We don't have to necessarily go to a sports bar to see it unless we want to. It's not on a cable channel like ESPN Monday Night Football. You can just put a good aerial on your roof. You get a good signal. You get the game. Man, NBC Sunday night. Those man, those Sunday night games make me nervous with Aaron. But those seem to be like his 
a voodoo doll or whatever. It just, I don't know. I don't know. Well, let me ask you this then. How long into the game before you are at least thinking, shut up, Chris Collinsworth? (laughs) Uh, Before the game even starts. Oh, wow. I would love to see Chris Collinsworth and Troy Buck together. (laughs) Oh, my. Just because. Just for the comedy show. (laughs) Oh, wow. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That about wraps up this episode of the Packers Fan Podcast. And as long as the Packers keep winning, we get more episodes of the Packers Fan Podcast. This is very true. And it's the unofficial Packers Fan Podcast. It's not affiliated with the NFL or the Green Bay Packers. However, we would sure love that to happen for next season. Just let them know to email us at media at PackersFanPodcast.com. And don't forget to become one of the Packers Fan Podcast faithful by visiting PackersFanPodcast.com slash support. See how you can help make the podcast even better. Please tell all of your Packers friends that this is the place to be after we destroy the Detroit Lions this week. It's going to be a fun time. And as I mentioned earlier in the show, remember to listen to us on the go with our free Packers fan podcast app for Android and iOS presented by the TicketKing.com. Don't get sold out of your next Packers game. Again, visit PackersFanPodcast.com slash tickets for all the details and follow us on Twitter. Be ready for the Monday Twitter poll at Packers fan pod. Also follow me on Twitter. I'm at Wayne Henderson and you again, sir, are... I am at Troy Heinrichs, the world's biggest Giants fan. And be sure to like us on Facebook as well. Just visit PackersFanPodcast.com slash Facebook to hear all about how you can be a Giants fan too. I'm confused. Is it just because they're playing the Redskins, right? (laughs) Just because they're they're playing the Redskins. I only wanted to clarify it just in case somebody tuned out and missed that that part of the podcast. Uh, go, go giant. Eli, go. <laughs> go. Please, Eli, beat the Redskins. Make it easy on us, okay? And Ooh. remember, PackersFanPodcast.com slash feedback to get your thoughts in after the game, during the game, before the game, anytime, day or night. Keep the conversations going. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Packers Fan Podcast. Be sure to subscribe in iTunes so you don't miss an episode, especially if we go to the playoffs. Yes, that's right. Playoffs. Yeah. And continue to support the podcast. Now, let's gear up. It's the final game of the 2016 campaign. We're going to Motown to stick it to the Lions and win the Norris Division. Let them hear you. Let's see what champions sound like. Say it loud and proud now. Go Pack Go! Go!